Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Odin's Ravens. This is a game that was put out by Osprey Games. It is a one to two player game that is competitive, and it takes roughly 20 to 40 minutes to play. In the game itself, each player is taking on the role of one of Odin's Ravens. And each morning, the Ravens are sent out to gather information about the world. And after thousands of years, they have turned this into a little bit of a competitive challenge. So they race in opposite directions, and the first one back to their Lord Odin is going to be the winning player. So in the game itself, the players are going to be racing down a set of cards that is going to represent the world. And they're going to get to invoke Loki's power to do different tricks and change things and hinder the other player and help them out in different ways, as you guys will see. My opinion of the game is it is a lot of fun. It's a very quack, quick, uh, nice filler game, um, and it has great theme. The artwork is beautiful. They did a wonderful job of that. It really kind of immerses you in, in the game itself. Uh, my wife loves the game. She uh, has a good time with it. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you guys have a chance to. And uh, let's head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. Odin's Ravens has three different decks in it. The first one is the land deck, and that one has pictures of land on both sides of the card. And these will be the cards that will make up the world that the ravens are going to race through. Then each player has their own deck, so you have the light raven and the dark raven, and both decks are comprised of 25 cards that have pictures of a single land on them. And then finally, each player will also get their Loki cards, which is a deck of eight cards, so for our Dark Raven and Light Raven. And each Loki card will have two options on it. So for this one, it'll let us either rotate one land 180 degrees or completely eliminate a land card, removing it from the track. Over here on this one, we, we can switch two land cards out without rotating them, or we can slide one land down, decreasing one side of the world and increasing the other side, which we'll cover more during the game. For board setup, the first thing you're going to do is grab the land deck and go ahead and give it a shuffle. From there, then you're going to go ahead and make a line of lands that is 16 tiles long. Now with this game, this example game, I'm just going to do 10 just so you guys can see. So each tile is going to be placed out in a row. And if a tile has the same picture of the same land on it, the first thing you're going to do is rotate that land. And if it still matches, so if I rotate this, we still have two mountains, then you're going to discard it to the bottom of the land deck and draw a new card. Once you're done with that, then you can place the land deck on the, ba on the back ends of the lands. And then each player will receive their own deck of cards and their own set of Loki cards. Each player can go ahead and shuffle their decks up. And then the players are going to head, go ahead and put their ravens out in front of one of the two rows. From here, then each player will draw five cards, and they can do this from either one of the decks. So our, our uh, light raven player is going to take four from his, and one Loki card. And the dark raven will go ahead and take three land cards, and two Loki cards. From here, we're ready to start the game. So the first thing we need to do is decide which player is going to go first, either the Light Raven or Dark Raven. And so we're going to go ahead and let the Light Raven go first. From here, the players are going to race down their end of the world and come back on their opponent's side. And the first Raven to reach their opponent's end will be the winning Raven. So they're going to be able to do this in two different ways by playing different types of cards. We have the Loki cards, which will allow the players to manipulate the world in different ways or make it harder for their opponents. And then we have the land cards that will, you have to play one land card that matches the land in front of you. So for example, with our white raven here, if we play a mountain card, it will allow us to move on to that mountain space. And so we have to have the matching card for the space that's in front of us. 
So again, we have this one here that matches there, so that will let us move here. And we have a forest, which will allow us to move there, and a mountain that will let us move here. But let's go ahead and say, for example, that we were here, and this one was flipped around. We don't have a grasslands to play, but we do happen to have two mountain cards. So we can choose to use two cards of the same type to count as one land of a different type. So we could spend these two mountains, and that would let us move on to the plane. And then we can use our other cards. Now, the one other thing we have are the Loki cards, which let us do different types of things. So this particular one here has two options. It'll allow us to either rotate one land card 180 degrees, or it'll let us eliminate a land completely from the field and move the rest of the lands back together. Now, keep in mind, with either of these options, you can potentially be helping your opponent as well, as if, for example, you chose to take a land out, it would affect their side of the table as well. So let's go ahead and show you how, guys how this works with some of the other cards real quick. So we're going to go ahead and do this one that will allow us to rotate a land. So we're going to go ahead and rotate this one over here. That way our player has three mountains in a row. And why that is beneficial is let's go ahead and say that we did our player's move. So we're going to spend the one mountain to move here. The, that one to move here. And the woods to move here. Now if we have a mountain, which we do, it would allow us to move all the way to the ends because all three of the mountains match. So when you play a card that matches, you can move your raven along those spaces until you reach the last one. Now that we've completed all the actions that our, our light raven can do, we can go ahead and end our turn by drawing up to three cards from either of the decks in any combination we choose. So our light raven's going to go ahead and take three cards from the lands deck. Now a player can have up to seven cards in their hands at any time, and if you draw more than seven cards, then at the end of your turn, you must uh, discard down to seven cards. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Dark Raven's turn now. So we're going to go ahead and flip over his cards here. And so he's got a couple of woods and a plane. So he'll go ahead and spend the plane to move on to there and one of the woods to move here. Now, at this point, he doesn't have a Dark Land card to play, so he can choose to play one of his Loki cards, or both of them if he wants to, which he's not going to right now, as you only have eight cards throughout the game, so he's going to save these to be able to mess with the other player later on. Now, the one other thing to keep in mind with these cards is that if you choose to use a card that manipulates a land in some way, you cannot choose a land that another player's raven is on. So for example, with our Loki card here that lets us rotate a land or eliminate a land, we cannot choose to use it on this card as there is a raven player on that card. And so at the end of our turn, we're going to go ahead and draw back three cards. And so he's going to go ahead and take some land cards, which will, will keep him under his seven cards as he's got six right now. From this point we're going to come back to our player over here and so he's got those so he's going to go ahead and just stop right there because he sees that there's a woods coming up so he doesn't want to spend both woods to get past that other lands as he's going to need more there. So he's going to go ahead and draw two more from here and one from the Loki deck. We'll move back over to our Dark Raven player. So he's going to go ahead and play this card here to move here. And he does not have a Plains card as of right now. So he's going to go ahead and stop there. And at this point, he's going to take three cards from the land deck. And that will put him at eight cards. So he's going to have to choose to discard one. And so he's going to go ahead and discard one of his planes. And that will bring him to seven cards. Heading back over to our Light Raven player. He's got a bunch of forests. And again, no planes. So he's going to go ahead and play two forests this time to move here. And then he'll play another forest to move on to there. And then he's got another Loki card that lets him trade places with two tiles or move a tile away. So he's going to go ahead and do that, and he'll do it here to shift this tile out. And then again, he will discard that Loki card. And then he's going to go ahead and play this card to move all the way over here. 
And that'll end his turn as he doesn't have any mountains. So he'll go ahead and draw three more lands in hopes that he'll pull one of the mountains. And then we'll go back over to our Dark Raven player. So he's going to go ahead and play his two mountain cards to move here. And then he'll play this card here to move here. And the woods. And finally, the sunset. At this point, he is going to go ahead and play one of his Loki cards. He's going to go ahead and play this one here to eliminate a space. So he's going to go ahead and take this space away. And then we can go ahead and just shift these cards up. At this point, he's not going to use his other Loki cards, so he's again going to draw cards. So he's going to go ahead and take two lands and another Loki card. Then we would head back over to our Light Raven. And so this is going to continue until one of the Raven players reaches the last tile. So I've gone ahead and moved the game forward a little bit. So it's our Dark Raven's turn, and he's racing towards the ends, and he can see that he doesn't have enough cards yet, so he's going to go ahead and play one of his Loki cards here. And this one will allow you to add a bridge space. So we're going to draw the top card from the land deck and place it here. So our Raven player, let's place it here. So he, our Raven player will have to go here and then around to finish. And then he's going to go ahead and play his second Loki card, which will allow him to draw two additional cards. So he's going to take two land cards. And so he's going to play his forest card to move here and he has two sunset cards to play here and then he'll play his mountain card to finish here now since he was the last raven to go then he would be considered the winner but let's go ahead and say that he had gone first in it with the raven that goes first if they finish first then the other raven gets one final turn to try to complete the race as well so let's go ahead and say that he did, and so our White Raven would be able to go one more time. And so he's going to play his Plains card to move here. And as he doesn't have a card here, he's going to go ahead and play his Loki card to draw two additional cards and hope to get something. So he has two mountains that he'll play to move into this space here. And he has these two cards that will let him move in here. And then he's going to do this card here to move here and which in this point both ravens have tied and so they would continue they would start a new race now if at any point in time you run out of your land deck you would simply just reshuffle your discard pile if you run out of your loki deck as our light raven has that is he will not get any more loki cards as he only gets eight cards for the entire game